All right. Awesome. Let's roll. Um, great. Well, uh, like I mentioned, this is the beta matchsticks commitment to diversity, uh, where we're going to be updating you kind of on our commitments that we've had here and, and hopefully spark a conversation uh, amongst everyone and, and hopefully get people inspired to, to do similar um, actions. Uh, I'm Ryan Brocher. I'm with uh, Matchstick Ventures and Beta board member. Um, I've got Reed here. Reed, do you want to do a quick intro? Hello, everyone. Uh, Co-founder of Beta and Startup Week with Ryan um, and uh, on the board now with Ryan and uh, we'll get to that. Uh, <laughs> um, but also uh, now uh, the founder of Groove Capital, uh, Minnesota's first check fund. Uh, so I'm in the process of launching that. Awesome. And uh, Clarence Bethia. Clarence, you want to do a quick intro? You still there? Clarence? Can you hear me now? There you go. Okay. Yeah, can hear. Clarence with the <laughs> founder and CEO of Upsy, uh, based in St. Paul, Minnesota, um, backed by Matchstick. Um, Brian is also a board member um, on, on our team. And uh, yeah, excited to be here. Nice. Cool. Um, so the format of this is, you know, we want to talk a bit about, um, you know, clearly the, the commitments we made publicly and where we're going there, but that's, I think that's kind of the side story here. Um, I think the, the, the first and foremost is, you know, I think Clarence was a big inspiration for a lot of us, uh, for, for both the organizations around things we can do and, and was, was critical to this, but Clarence, if you don't mind, it, it'd be great to kind of hear kind of your backstory and, and being a, a black founder in the tech community and, and some of that experience. Um, Cause I think that, you know, hearing that and then hearing that from like many others um, yeah, across the, the Twin Cities and, and uh, the experiences that we've had is clearly a inspiration for, you know, the action that we're taking. Um, but I think it'd be great for, for people to kind of hear that backstory and, and your experiences first and foremost. Yeah, so, you know, I, I am originally from Atlanta, Georgia. So, um, you know, you know, Upsy's been around for about, you know, four and a half years or five years. Um, and, you know, the, the challenges of being uh, an African-American founder, Black founder, um, and, and especially like specific to our ecosystem here in Minnesota, there's just not many Black founders, you know, around, right? And um, so, like, you know, one of the initial challenges was just like how, as a Black founder, do, like, I approach investors how do i approach other founders who you know who are the people in our community um that you know won't just look at me as like oh he's black he shouldn't be in the community um but like you know he's welcome here and i, and I think you know when and I, I think i told you this when we you know when, after the joy floor stuff um ryan it was that you know so many black founders are even just scared to walk in the room because of how it's been for black founders in, in our community and because there's not many of them is, is not a problem that is just like ringing true um so loudly across the community but i think what happened you know with the murder of george floyd um it gave you know it, it gave black folks in the community a chance to speak up um without you know without feeling like there would be like long-term repercussions um and so you know like there's just tons of challenges from just you know, being black to start off. And then secondly, like, you know, I don't come from a situation where I understood, I understood venture capital, I understood how to build a company. And so like, like, what are those places that I can go to, you know, I was fortunate enough to get into beta when, you know, when we were a new company. Um, but, you know, not many people, there are only 10 companies can get in at a time, right? And there, there's an education gap um, for black founders of knowing how to raise money, how to approach investors, how to build a deck, um, you know, everything from like how to incorporate a company the correct way. So, uh, you know, how to have a clean cap table. Um, and, and that is a place and, and a, 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 you know, a huge gap where I, I felt like, you know, beta, you know, was was a was a, a gap filler for for me. Um, and then you take it to the next level of, you know, getting into tech stars and having the opportunity to you know learn at that level. 
Um, it, it just there's just so many gap for for African American founders. Um, and and you know that's why when this moment came, I felt like there was an opportunity to collaborate with you guys and say, hey, like like what can you do being leaders in our community? Um, you know, with, with both Beta and Matchstick, and now um, you know, read your fund. It's like how can you be leaders in our community so that Black founders feel feels comfortable coming to you and asking for money and seeking advice? Yeah. No, that's great. And I think that was, you know, getting into some of the, the stuff that the beta and magic has done is, is hearing that experience that, that you have. And, and that was, that was a really, I mean, I think chilling, um, revelation that you, you said, it was just like the, the fear of, of being able to pitch or, or just the, the unknowns that are out there. And that, yeah, that it's kind of hard as like a, a white male who just kind of has that privilege to know that you can walk in and have those conversations like that that was a really chilling thing and i know something you and i talked a lot about uh, on there and like ways that you can kind of lower that that barrier um so that it, it isn't intimidating you know it isn't uncommon you feel welcomed um across the board so um yeah, I know there was a when when we when we got into this and, and clearly with the murder of George Floyd, there was a lot of kind of open conversations going back and forth, and that's really the the basis of a lot of these these commitments we've made. Hey, Clarence, just looking back on your experience, um, it, it's really good to be reminded of of your story. I'm curious from your vantage point if you feel like that's changed. Uh, for for um, other uh, African American founders that have kind of followed in your footsteps, like ha is it is it still uh, you know people experiencing a lot of the same problems? Has it gotten better? Has it gotten worse? W what have you either experienced for yourself or been hearing from others uh, who have had similar experiences? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Um, I don't believe that something that has been going on for many, many years, you know, when, you know, people are saying 400 years, but you know, the startup community here has been 400 years. So like <laughs> things that's been going on in our community for, for, for de let's say decades, right. Um, they're not going to change over five months. Like that, that's just the truth. So to answer your question, are we still having some of those problems in our community? Yes. Has there been um, improvement? Yeah, yeah, you know, small improvements, right? But like, you you don't you don't you don't change this problem overnight. It, it's going to take, you know, what what Beta and Mastic did. It's going to take every firm here to do and be conscious of, right? And, and make a commitment. Um, I, I think you guys really put yourself out there, right? Like making that commitment that you made um, and, and making it so public. Like you you held yourself to a standard. And I think we need more of that in our community. Um, and I think we, we need, you know, you know, you, you both are white guys, you have privilege. It's like, how do we get you pushing other people and other firms um, to follow your lead and say, this is what we're going to do. And and, and and let me be clear, like, I don't want to just turn into like a, um, a, a woe is me thing. Cause it's like, I, I'm, I'm the first <laughs> from the woe is me guy, as you guys know. Yeah, you are. Um, yeah, um, <laughs> at kicking ass, and uh, and and everybody should know that too. Yeah, yeah. I'm 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 really about just speaking up for people. And I told Ryan this. I said, you know, there's like I need to speak up because there's people who are fearful of speaking up, right? Uh, because they're scared that well, Ryan won't invest in me in the future. You know, Reed won't invest in me in the future if I say something that they don't like and. You know, to, to say this publicly, you know, you guys have been nothing like like that, not even close. Hell, Ryan Ryan told me no twice before he told me yes, right? So like he is he is, yeah. You you always you have to bring are, that up, I feel like in every that. one of our <laughs> I, 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 I love I, it. I, I do well, I, well it's it's a it, it's a good thing, right? Like I, I feel like it's yeah, super no, totally. positive that you know, you said no and then you know, I did what was asked of me and you said yes. Like that's how it actually is supposed to go. Um, yeah, yeah. But you know, back to what I was saying before I got up on the right <laughs> tangent. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, it, it is, 
so it, it's going to take a long time for us to change, but we, we need exactly what you guys have done to push the envelope and to be uncomfortable um, so that people see that, hey, there's, you know, there's people in our communities doing this. Maybe we should follow through. But have we, have we seen, Reed, to your question, have we seen um, like tremendous change? Like it's clear no. Because as much as you guys put out what you said, and, and like I, I've been fortunate to be behind the scenes and seeing the work that you guys have been doing, um, there's a lot of people who just put things out just to, <laughs> just because it was a cool thing to do for two weeks, right? Yeah. Like it, it, it's been impressive behind the scenes watching you guys actually execute on the things that you say you were going to do. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we clearly uh, needed your help on the back end, and and uh, the, the the continual pushing is is appreciated, and and hopefully you keep doing it. That's for sure. I I feel like it would be uh, <clears throat> helpful to explain for people on the phone, like maybe some of the backstory how we got to those points and, yeah. and yeah. because like that's the part that we experienced as a small group you know between the three of us and then the rest of the board but not a lot of people got to experience until after we said okay here's what we're going to do but the backstory clarence if you're okay with me sharing um it is yeah. Yeah. uh the two of us exchanging some text messages following uh George Floyd's murder and, and, you know, trying to process that, which led to a couple conversations that, you know, for me were challenging in, in a really good way. I think Clarence, you were, you know, gentle while also like had a sense of urgency and saw that this was an opportunity to like really change things and pushed uh, on, on us uh to to ask ourselves hard questions um and like it was uncomfortable like it still is uncomfortable we're still like trying to figure out how do we do this in a way that is you know continuing the mission of what we're trying to do for uh for founders while also recognizing things that we just weren't paying attention to or or addressing it at the time and so um you know, I don't know. I don't remember how many conversations I ended up taking between the two of us, Clarence. But, um, you know, what I remember about that is like it felt it felt different, and it felt like I I needed to spend some time just like thinking more than I had thought before. Um, and I, I appreciate what you, what you did uh, to to push us. I don't know if there's anything you want to add to that, but you know that that's what ultimately led to um okay well like let I, i'm i'm with you man like what do you think we need to do um and and what do you think of these uh you know actions and consequences as a as a way to approach this and and you know you were super helpful for that process yeah i mean it, it i thought those conversations were very uncomfortable both sides right like from my side of the table, they were uncomfortable because now I, I, I didn't have a choice but to, you know, kind of tell the hard truth in this moment that we, where we're at. And, and, and you guys were great. Like, it, it was um, it, it was emotional. It was an emotional couple of phone calls for all of us. Yeah. Yeah. Very much so. It's great. Well, um, I think it'd be good if we kind of go through, I have I have a couple of slides here and we have some exciting announcements too. I wanna make sure we don't miss some of that, um, but get into some of this. And then I don't, if there's any questions or any other stuff that people wanna go, like feel free to throw it in the chat and Reed can, uh, can um, let us know here. But a um, little bit of great conversation here. I just wanna talk a bit about you know, clearly the the George Floyd murder was was the start of this, as we mentioned, and you know, really was a a, a turning point, I think, in, in having these hard conversations and awkward conversations uh, from there. But like Reed said, it was really a a thing of like feeling compelled to act, like something to do, and being pushed by by Clarence and by other Black founders and in, in the community to actually do something, and and not just make a statement you know like i think clarence like you said like just like a we support black founders but no like something that is public it's measured we're going to be held accountable 
like forcing forcing us to do this stuff. Um, you know, and I think that was, I think a big thing for us was like, we need to be held accountable for this and in a big realization, not just like a, we support this or, you know, whatever it's, it's um, no, these are the things we're actually going to do. Um, and, um, you know, working with the black founders in the community, like Clarence and others to say like, what, what are the things that we could do um, to try and help um, or, and, or just, you know, be a catalyst or, or, a, a you know, something that uh, shows that there are ways to, to do something. But yeah, I would say a big thing for, for all of this is that, you know, I don't, I don't think that this is like the solution. It's not going to like clearly solve the problem in the whole, but, you know, we are hoping that this acts as a catalyst for change for the market. So others can copy, they can do their own thing. And, you know, we're, we're continually learning as well. Like, I don't like, this is a, an ongoing thing um, and putting ourselves out there to say like, here are some stuff we want to, we want to strive for and we'll hit it. And then if we hit those and maybe there's probably more we can keep doing. So um, we're continually learning. We're always open to more suggestions on here, but this was our, you know, first pass at uh, ways we can, we can act on it. Um, so uh, Reed, you want to kind of talk through some of the beta stuff here? Yeah, totally. Um, so working with with uh with Clarence and 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 the board and and Casey uh now as our executive director we we tried to come up with uh some measurable things that that we thought we could do as an as an organization to to address some of the systemic uh issues that that we had overlooked um within our small team and and I think there was like two kind of methods of of thinking about this one was just like we need to acknowledge that we we could have done better and let's start there um and and uh you know wanted to make sure that that uh you know founders within our community if they had felt slighted um or didn't feel as represented as they they could have felt by our offerings um that that we went out of our way to say like we're sorry we could have done better uh, and here's what we're going to do. And so part of this, you know, the the ways that we wanted to remedy this uh, within the or our own organization was, okay, we got to do some immediate things. And then looking towards the future, how do you build in scale uh, to create change in, in, indefinitely and, and, and stuff that can be kind of exponential. Um, and so that's some of the thinking that went into this. The first one, if you want to advance it is um not having a a, a black uh founder on our board um and so we earlier in the year had had started the conversations around okay well what types of what types of roles are we looking for and what types of influence do we want to have in this group um and you know we have some investment we have some uh you know community community uh building we have a, a family foundation representative but honestly like ryan and i it's been a while since either the two of us were founders uh in in a startup and we needed that and uh we also needed to make sure that as a organization that was looking to support our black founder community that there was a voice in that board seat that that was able to provide um ideally both situations so with that it's super exciting to announce that the person that we've uh asked to be a part of our board is clarence uh, hey. <laughs> yeah. maybe not a yeah. maybe not a huge and, 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 long overdue yeah, yeah long and, overdue. And, and, and and i want to i, I want to yeah and i want to say this so like it, it's clear because i think a lot of times in these situations our community entity think like oh You've asked, you've asked Clarence to join the board. Like, this is just like what you're doing to save face, right? Like, yeah, you guys know me well. Like, and, I, and, I, and I said this during, like, when we, like, we were going dancing about the, the board stuff, is that if this was a deal where you want to throw me on so you can look good, I wasn't interested yeah. in that, right? Like, this had to be a situation because, you know, I'm a loud mouth anyway. You, like, I, I, I need to be in a place where, I can create change. Um, and yeah. if that was going to be uncomfortable for you guys, I didn't want to join. Right. I, just, I didn't like, I don't, I don't have enough hours in a day as it is. So like, I appreciate that You guys say, no, like you, like, this is about creating change in our community. 
Uh, and that's why I'm so excited to to join the board because I think there's a, there's a role for me to um, to to kind of give you a perspective from what Black founders are going through and hopefully make yeah. change quicker. Yeah, I, I, I want to make it clear, like our sensitivity with with asking Clarence to join was number one, like Clarence, don't take your eye off the ball with Upsy. Like the the most important thing that you can do is be successful with that organization. And if this is a distraction from that, like we don't want you to be a part of this because you know that's more important ultimately. And and so we had that conversation, um, and and Clarence assured us that would that wouldn't be the case. And um, you know if if it isn't if I haven't already made this clear, like number one, like you just said, Clarence, uh, <laughs> like we couldn't do this in a way that that was placating to you or or to the black community just because of like your nature that would not slide um <laughs> and so we want you and your voice um because we appreciate that and we appreciate the push and 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 the way that you think and most importantly like you're a founder in minnesota who is scaling a company and and that influence on this organization is critical um, and, and, and so we're excited to have you a part of this, uh, to, to bring those things to it while also representing, uh, the, the black community. Great. And then, Welcome, Clarence. uh, on that, uh, on that point, I'm I, excited. I, like in, yeah. it, in our continued effort, like we're not done. Um, and, and we're still continuing to look to expand our board. Um, and and we're in the process of looking for uh, kind of back to the ingredients that we feel like we really need um, uh, some some corporate representation. And so, if you're listening and uh, and know somebody that would be a great fit um, that that could represent uh, the kind of corporate side of things and the the strength that we have in 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 Minnesota on that, like send them our way. Um, because we, uh, we've, we've continued to build out this board, um, that we didn't, we actually haven't really gone out of our way to explain kind of all the work that's been going on in that. But, um, the current board right now is, is Ryan and me and Clarence, Nels Patterson, who's at live front, uh, Amy Pearson, um, from the Pearson family foundation and Allison Barman, uh, formerly of the Bush Foundation. So the the group has grown from three to now six in the last year. Um, and we've got room for one more. Okay. Cool. Well, going to number two here. Yeah, so this was, this is kind of starting to switch gears into that, like how do we, make sure that we've got good influence and, and and how is this kind of scalable going forwards and so the this next bullet of making sure that when we're selecting uh startups to join our future cohorts that we have uh some diversity in the room um in in many aspects uh in, in making sure that those selections are being informed not just by the internal team uh, but also uh others from the community that can help us think through uh, how to evaluate the companies that are raising their hand to be a part of the program. Um, Clarence, I wasn't in this this process, uh, this, this selection, but I know that you and the rest of the group kind of recently went through this. Do you want to share kind of your experience in, in being a part of the selection process? Yeah, I mean, so... I, I guess I don't know how the selection process was in the past, so I don't I don't have a I don't have great scope on like what it was like before. But you know I I know from yeah I was in beta in what 2016. Um, like to me beta has always been like the open door. Like and and I I think I told you guys this when we were going back and forth um, about the pledge was like there were so many programs here and I won't mention them because I don't want this to be like a hack job. Um, but there were so many programs I was trying to get into and, and do things with when I first got started to, to learn and, and get educated. 
Um, and I remember how welcoming like the beta program was to to me and to Upsy. And this is when I was green, you know, when Ryan was telling me no a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> um, just... <laughs> Second time. <laughs> Boom, just poke him. Yeah, I like it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I got one more time for, for the call. For, for, um, for what it's worth, we've said this, yeah, this we've was... said yes three times afterwards, though, right? <laughs> three times. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yes. that's how the numbers go. Like however you, That's right. How, how many times you say no, you got to say yes more times than that. Um, <laughs> Plus one. And yeah. so, um, <laughs> so, so I always felt like um, Beta was was like didn't have a huge issue when it came to that right like like oh like you got a cool business you're early um you know we we, we think you're we think you're cool like why don't you come be a, a part of beta and so when i look at the history of beta i i don't look at it and say god there's, there's no black founders because there's actually been many black founders who have been a part of beta um the, the question i have is like how do we take beta from like a black founder can get in um and, and be a part of the program to like a black founder can leave and go raise venture capital right and, and black founder can go and be successful afterwards and i know those are some of the things that we're talking about kind of behind the scenes is like how do we offer more resources not just the black founder but to all founders and include more black founders um to, yep. to be successful kind of after the, the program so uh, I, I know we got like an unbelievable class of of beta founders coming up or are already chosen um, and uh, super excited to see them to see. Nice. Uh, well, we appreciate your being a part of that process, Clarence, and look and 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 setting the the expectations for what the future looks like in that. Um, and then, lastly, Ryan, just being sensitive of time um, and and getting room for some some of the magic stuff. Um, uh, education it, it interwoven into the cohort. Um, and this is something that's just been constantly evolving over the last couple of years is like, how do we bring in founders and provide meaningful content? Um, and, and, and then who's presenting that content? Um, and so when we think of like scale and influence and people kind of giving back, it's important for us to be inclusive um, at, as how we develop that content. So a lot of work has actually gone into um, making sure that presentations are are coming from uh, a variety of voices um, and, and and continuing to push ourselves to ensure that topics of diversity are, are being brought up early in a startup's life cycle so that they can help uh, think through um, you know how to build their businesses in a way that that is inclusive um, if, if anybody has any specific questions around, kind of when and how that gets interwoven, be happy to share that um, in, in another conversation. But um, that's actually just ramping up now. Um, and, and Casey and, and Jihan, who have been overseeing the development of this one, have been doing a really great job of making sure that new voices have are, are being included and in, in that uh, you know we're continuing to move ahead with what we said we were going to do. Great. Well, yeah, and a big shout out to, to Casey and Jihan and, you know, Clarence Reed, like everyone, it's been, you know, a, a crazy six plus seven months, uh, you know, since everything's kind of gone down and we've, we've made these commitments, but it, just incredible progress on it. And, and it's just the beginning, right? Like the due date for this stuff was the end of this year. Um, I think we've got most of these things in, in place, but it's like we said, it's just the beginning. So hopefully people continue to reach out, provide suggestions and continue to push us in the right direction. Right. I think that's that's the main thing here is that we hope that this is just the beginning of of where beta can can be heading. Um, cool. So transitioning um, quickly to, to match stick ventures. Um, similarly, we made some very public statements about ways that we thought match stick could be helpful. Um, Clarence has been a, a big help on the back end of, of this as well as is helping uh, my partner Natty Zola and I think about ways that a, a VC fund can can help uh, members of the Black community uh, in, in the tech and and you know what are ways that we can kind of push this forward. Um, so similarly, we made some some public commitments and and uh, just conscious of time here, I'll have to go through these fairly quick, uh, but happy to follow up with anyone on on more details here. Um, 
And, um, you know, I think the way that Matchstick did it is we, we had a little bit longer of a time horizon. We have a couple more um, commitments here, but this is really like, we wanted to put stuff out there that we knew was gonna be stretch goals for us and that we'd be moving towards that and continuing to learn kind of throughout that process to make sure that these are these are the right goals. And, you know, we may have to, to pivot them a little bit if we need to, but um, to, to getting it more, more right. Um, but, uh, you know, I wanted to give a quick update of kind of where we are and the outcomes we've seen from some of these, these commitments. Um, so our first one was develop five more relationship with networks and orgs um, who can help us better understand and increase the prevalence of black founders in our investment pipeline. So really just like top of funnel, how do we, how do we get to engage and kind of like Clarence said, open the door and, 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 have the opportunity to see more black founder deals that we could potentially then fund. Cause I think that's really where a lot of this starts, right. Is just having the, the conversation or the relationship or the network uh, from there. And i um, happy to say we've made some progress on this. Um, we have, we have two um, relationships in place uh, for this that have been really helping with us on deal flow. Um, it's been a little tricky because we are trying to find deal flow that over overlaps with kind of the regional stuff that we, we focus on because we focus really on the Rockies and the North. So it, we know we're trying to thread a needle here, but we're pushing really hard. Um, we've reached out to about 10 organizations. Some of them, like I said, just haven't been on the, the, the deal flow front, but two of them have. So we're excited to be working with them. Um, and just a side note, like ever since we've kind of made this, this announcement, um, Natty and I were good, kind of looking through our, our pipeline of companies and we estimate about 50% of our deal flow since Matchstick has made this announcement has, has been diverse founders. Um, and we have made investments uh, in at least two companies who have diverse founders um, at, at the helm. So it, it's been great. And we've had people reach out to us specifically based on these, these announcements from here. So while there hasn't been like a network, let's say, or like a relationship, we've seen our deal flow increase dramatically um, on that front, which is exactly you know, really why, why we wanted this to this statement to, to be out there. So we think that that is moving in the right direction um, for sure. Um, number two, uh, add an advisor to our funds board who is black. Um, we have not added this person yet, but we are in the process of doing this. So we've been working with our existing advisors to detail kind of like what that ideal candidate looks like um, beyond um, uh, being black, the, like you know, like what are the ideal characteristics? Is it a is it a founder? Is it a another VC? You know, there's a lot of kind of characteristics of that, and then start to build the pipeline. Um, so we are making a list of those candidates and hope to make some actions on that um, at the end of this year, probably start of start of next year. Um, another thing that was big for us is is helping our portfolio of companies um, add black members to their board. Uh, their advisory board or their C-suite in general, just like, you know, having prevalence of, of folks um, in this is, is really important. So I say we're making progress toward this. Um, if, if people aren't familiar, there's a there's a new network out there called the Valance Network, started by Kobe Fuller. Um, and we've, we're signing up Matchstick for that. And what that does is it allows, it basically challenges folks to do exactly this. And then it also provides a list of candidates for them. So we're in the early stages of signing up for this. We hope that this is a a mechanism for us to help support that uh, on top of like the like portfolio companies who are raising their hands and us just generally going out and, and you know basically searching for folks that can help them in in these roles uh, but we hope that that's a nice platform that that we'll be able to leverage um, so we'll have more on that soon um, and then uh, you know the last commit we had is getting more black candidates into the, the open roles within our portfolio because it's not only about uh, that the founders and uh, the people starting the companies, like clearly that's a, that's a massive thing because there's, there's a ripple effect off of that, but also just um, getting candidates, black candidates into roles within startups, right? I think that can have a flywheel effect as well. So we've been trying to push a lot of those candidates into our portfolio, um, you know, making, um, will, will, willfully um, making intros to, uh, our, our founders in our portfolio. Um, we're trying to figure out, I would say we haven't done this yet, but we continually to, we're making kind of one-to-one -one connections across this. And we're, we're struggling to find a way to systematically um, carry this out. So we're, we've been looking through some, some different platforms uh, and stuff that we can kind of help source candidates, but then also help push them into, um, you know, our portfolio 
pool. So I would say that one is is a work in progress right now. It's we're doing it kind of one offs, um, so it's not systematically in place, but it is something that we are we are pushing hard on um, right now. So ma making some progress across the matchstick stuff. Um, like I said, it's still a work in progress for a lot of this. We think we're making progress on it, but we're also learning a lot. And um, you know, I think these things are are definitely moving in the right direction um, for that. So just a, a quick recap here. I know we're we're running short on time, um, and I don't know if we have any questions in there. But we thought this would, you know, we hope with all these pledges and commitments, we, like we said, this, these aren't the answers. We hope that these are, um, you know, a show of of ways that you can make progress. And and you know, we we challenge other organizations, other VC funds, to make similar pledges. And they don't have to be the same ones we do. We we know that these aren't the answer, but um, you know not just make a statement, but make actionable, um, you know, pledges that are public and can be held accountable um, and really try to, you know, move the needle here. Um, now be an advocate for black founders and, and employees across the board. And I think more, more than anything is like, hold us accountable, like hold beta accountable, hold magic accountable, like make sure we are doing this right. I think if all else, like if, if you can hold us accountable, amazing. Uh, if you can help us achieve these goals, even better. <laughs> We're always in need of help. We're always in need of uh, suggestions for that. So if, if you have any ideas, any ways you can help, like please reach out to to myself, to Reed, to Clarence. Um, and, uh, you know, we I think we'll, we'll definitely um, follow up with all that stuff and we're open to it. Just uh, real quick, Ryan, um, I've had a, a conversation since uh, we we've gone through some of these steps with uh, other people and other organizations that are trying to figure out how to do this themselves. Yeah. Um, and my th my thing is like we had the luxury of having somebody like Clarence who had the courage to like talk to us about it. Like we had a community that felt comfortable enough with us in order to like call us on our bullshit. Um, yeah. and, and so like, if, if you're in an organization and you're trying to figure out what, what can we do and how do we need to change things? I would start with your, essentially your customer. Um, you know, Clarence went through our program. He was in our alumni, he knew us, we had a history. And so there was a mutual kind of respect for how we wanted to learn from each other. Um, and, and so like, if you have that, I would propose that you start with the people that that are experiencing what you're trying to create because they're going to be like clarence was for us the the most important uh input into how you want to develop a, a strategy that can really change things um within your own organization so again clarence you're the man thank you for putting yourself on the uh putting yourself out there and um you know continue to push us For sure, for sure. Right. Thank you guys for, um, for listening, right? Like, uh, it has to start with that. And 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 I want to be clear, like, yeah, I'm not not the I I don't want to be the voice for the black community, right? Like, that's that's a big job. Uh, it's not fair. What I want to be is uh, uh yeah, I, I want to be a black founder, um, that you guys can lean on and get like real like like live advice from um yeah. based on my experiences um and 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 like how do we increase it so that clarence is not just the voice but there's 10 you know there's 10 clarences that yeah. that you that you can talk to so uh, i want to be helpful there yep outstanding good point great well i think we got to wrap it up here we're we're at time um I know we didn't get to, to any Q and A here, but um, I know my email is just Ryan at Matchstick Ventures. If anyone wants to reach out, uh, uh, reading clearance if you want to share yours. Happy to keep this conversation going uh, offline as well. Yeah, my I'll put it in the chat. Okay, thanks. Great, cool. Well, thanks Appreciate for everyone it. for joining. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks everyone for joining. Um, really appreciate it. And um, yeah, enjoy the rest of Startup Week.